Welcome to The Drive Podcast. I'm your host, Peter Atia. If you like this video, please let me know by subscribing to the channel or visiting my website to become a member for more exclusive content. So what is leptin resistance and how does it manifest? Why does it manifest? Um, and how frequent is it? Leptin resistance. So when leptin was discovered first in 1994 by a team led by Jeff Friedman and, and Rudy Leibel, they found that this was the gene that was missing in an obese mouse model called the OBOB mouse. This animal was extremely obese as a result of lacking of a defect in the production of, of this protein. One single amino acid substitution that destroyed this protein and caused, uh, or sorry, one, one single base pair that destroyed this protein and caused the loss of function in this massive obesity. And when this was discovered, and also discovered that humans have leptin, then it was like this scientific bonanza. It was like, well, maybe we've discovered the cause of obesity. Maybe people with obesity don't have enough leptin. And so their brains you know, think they don't have enough body fat when really they do. They, the failure to perceive the body fat, that's what causes obesity in these OBOB mice. And so, they started measuring leptin levels in people with obesity, and it turns out they, they were, were actually high. elevated. Mm. Yeah, because it's correlated. We now know it's correlated with fat mass. And so, what you know? What's the deal? If this is a hormone that regulates body fatness, why is it that people with obesity have so much of it, and it's not suppressing their excess body fat mass? And the concept that has been um, invoked to explain this is leptin resistance. So in the same way that people can develop insulin resistance where it takes more insulin to do the physiological jobs in the body, people with obesity um, require more leptin for the hypothalamus to be satisfied. So another way to say that, they require more leptin to avert the starvation response that the brain has that uh, where alarm bells start going off because it thinks you don't have enough body fat. So they require more, more leptin to achieve that state. And so we call that leptin resistance, but we don't really know how it works yet. So, you know, that's just a general term for requiring more leptin to avert the starvation response. But we don't know whether that is something where there's fewer leptin receptors on a certain kind of cell whether there's a downstream signaling impairment in intracellular signaling cascades, whether there is a change in cell-to-cell -cell communication. Maybe the cell that's receiving the leptin is getting the message just fine, but there's some kind of downstream change in neural processing where the signal gets, gets clouded or modified. We don't know the answer to that question. Yeah, it, seem, it seems like the only thing we know is it's not too low an amount of circulating leptin as evidenced by two things. One, the high circulating levels of leptin and the fact, I think more importantly, that when you give exogenous leptin, it doesn't improve the condition, suggesting that that's not the defect. Yes. I mean, you can give high levels of leptin and it will cause weight loss, but it doesn't do much. And if you look at leptin signaling, there's there were some early studies done in, in animal models suggesting that if you're just looking Broad, if you mash up the hypothalamus and you look at what's going on in it broadly on average, you find that the amount of leptin response, the, the intracellular signaling cascade that's activated by leptin is not really impaired in animals with obesity. It's like, it's like they're getting the same leptin signal from a much higher level of leptin. So that, that's kind of like some evidence that we have